That the Naira continues to witness a downward slide is worrisome to every Nigerian. As such, the Senate has summoned the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emefele, over depreciation of the Naira. This followed a motion by Senator Olubumi Adetumbi as the Naira currently trades above 700 Naira per dollar. Oh, apologies, above 700 per dollar at the parallel market. Adekunle, how disgraceful is this? Has he ever gotten this bad? No, it has never. Hmm. This is the worst situation economically we have hmm. ever been as a country. The worst. Nigeria has never been this terrible. Nigeria is now a place where people are no longer happy. People are crying. People are hungry. People are angry. Every day. We are not talking about you want to build a house, you want to buy land. No. Eat. It's an impossible thing. Too difficult for many Nigerians. Of course, we have always battled with poverty. We know that every country does. But what we've had under this administration has never happened in our history. You see, I'll give you some of the, how to tell you how this government has devalued life living in Nigeria. <laughs> Let me tell you some of the devaluation and you will shake your head. You see, uh, when this government took over, the price of rice, which is one of the most popular food items in the house of every Nigerian. Like I'm talking about the poor, I'm not talking about our big men. As at the time this government took over, it was 8,700 naira. Today, you need to buy the same, I'm saying called 50 kg. Now, you need to buy the same bag, 37, 30 something, 40 years, depending on where you are. On area where you are. To me, that's almost 400% increment. Devaluation. Percent. Mm. How do people handle that? When you go from that to bread, Palm oil, diesel, when this government took over, was 145 naira. Do you know that today, the Nigerian economy, as a whole, all over Nigeria, is not powered by our electricity, it's powered by diesel. Today, for a little, for a liter of diesel, you need to pay at least 800 naira. If you are in any market or any shopping mall, anywhere, and you realize that what you bought yesterday has increased today, that's part of the reason because operating costs are killing businesses. And it didn't start this month or last month. It's been on for months since last year. And our country has been clueless and inept at handling this matter. So you can go on and go on. Look at domestic flights in Nigeria. Many of them are collapsing. Many of them are, you know, reducing. Uh, Number of flights. You see so many things. In terms of economic calamity, what is happening? Oh, look at something again. Gas. For a 12.5 kg that you can feed at the time for like 3,000, 2,005, 2,007. Today, especially in Lagos, say it goes not for nothing less than 10,000 naira. You get my point? When we talk about petrol, despite all the deceptions from some of those who said, if they do this, the prices will come down. The prices have always been going up. And unfortunately, you see scarcity queues in many places in Nigeria. Up to, where, up to this moment, there is no one that can tell you this is how much they are selling a liter of petrol. If you go to this, what you will buy is, I was in Oshon for the election, all the filling stations where I was buying, I didn't buy anything less than 200. All right, Biko, let me have your thoughts. And then again, isn't it time the CBN governor takes a bow? Yes, if he has honor. <laughs> if he has honor, as tiny as a mustard mm -hmm. seed, by now, he would have left on his home. Because, I mean, remaining there, I, I just don't get it. It's, it's the typical Nigerian. The Nigerian is failing at something. He doesn't see himself as someone who has failed this nation. But he wants to remain. In fact, he wanted to be president. 
that's the shame of it all. It's, 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 it's an insult to the rest of us that a man who has presided over the free fall of our currency mm. wants to even become president. What is the first, I mean, if, if, if you are standing <laughs> on that soapbox, what is the first thing that you will say to defend yourself, to even uh, say that you are qualified? I mean, in 2014, it was 180 naira to a dollar. 2014. Today. Today, 716. It came to 716 yeah. yesterday. People are talking about 710. It came to 716. Yesterday, you know, That's it, it fluctuates. Of Sometimes, what you, what you, you uh, uh, how much you uh, bought the currency or you exchange the currency in the morning will not necessarily be the, the, the price at which, the rate at which you exchange it in the night at 10 p.m. The volatility that we face with our currency is the worst anywhere in the world. Look at the South Africans. It is 16 rand to a dollar. 16 rand to mm -hmm. a dollar. Morocco is, the, Morocco, the Moroccan dirham is 10 to a dollar. 10 Moroccan dirham to a dollar. 10 Egyptian pound, uh, 18 Egyptian pound to a dollar. Then Botswana, their currency, the Botswana Pula, is 12 Botswana Pula to a dollar. All of these countries is the same thing with even the Kenyans. Kenyan shilling is 118 Kenyan shilling to a dollar. These are countries that we like to say we are bigger than them. We are their big brothers. We are the giant this, of Africa. They are not facing the kind of problem. Yes, Angola is one of the most expensive countries to live in mm. in, 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 in this continent. Inflation is. It's a big issue in Uganda, in, in, Angola. in Angola. But it is 400 and the, the currency exchanges at 432 to a dollar. the dollar. All of those countries, including the ones around us now, their currencies are stronger than our own. When people say, oh, it's because we stop producing, that's, it's not, that's, that's not the only reason. Are we the only country? What is what is uh, what is um, um, Togo exporting to the world? Are we the only country? Is the way the currency has been managed? Oh, you 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 operate a dual uh, exchange window. People have said you need to close the gap between the two. All right, Bikio, I would allow you continue your discussion when we come back from this break. All right, welcome back. This is still journalist Dangout on road talking about the Naira witnessing the most alarming downward slide in years. Thank you. Yes, and, and, and what I'm saying is, and I've challenged the CBN governor in the past, some of the people who sit on social media to defend rubbish. <laughs> They've not come out to take up that challenge. Mm. I've said, mention a country that operates this dual exchange window with the kind of gap between the unofficial and the official markets. Because when you allow this kind of gap to subsist, it only encourages rent seeking. There's no way that the gap will be that wide. Let's even say 415 to 710. If you have the dollar, you will take it to the, to the, to the black market. The, the people who use the black market are a lot more because we have not perfected the the we have we have not solved the this the supply disequilibrium by making sure that those who want to access it either through the banks can access it when they need it if you are your people we now have people importers who are forced to go to the black market because the, the currency is not readily available. We have investors who came into our country to invest, and they are struggling to pull their, the money that they've made in our country. They are struggling to even pull it out because the, 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 the dollar is not made available to them. It's the same thing that's frustrating. Even airlines, 
Some of them are forced to resort to the black market. Look at what the diesel importers are saying. They said, CBN, uh, give us dollar at the official exchange rate. If you do that, the, the price will go down because some of us are resorting to the mm. black market. So if that window, because even during the Jonathan era, it's not as if we didn't have dual uh, um, exchange rate. It, during um, the Abacha era, it's not as if we didn't have the dual exchange rate. But there has been no time in the history of our country where the gap between the unofficial uh, market, uh, between the unofficial uh, market rate and the official market rate is this wide. Mm. So if you have it, you know to make money. And a lot of the banks, what are they doing? They supply banks with forex every week. They, they pull this forex and give to, to, to brood exchange uh, operators, to people who will go and sell at the black market rate. Something that you need, they will be asking you questions. There's a friend of mine who had to threaten a bank before they made uh, uh, the dollar available to him. So when people say go to a bank, if you are doing uh, good business, go to the bank, you will get it. They don't know what they are talking about. They don't know what they are talking about. People are forced because they go to those banks and the, 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 it's, not, it's not readily made available to them. They are forced to use the black market. All right. So the, the demand, people will keep asking for this thing because it's not readily available. Adekunle, let me have your last thought before we, before we go. Yes, with uh, Nigeria with, our, with not less than 34% unemployment rate, cannot have peace until that problem is solved. Because what that means is that 60% of our national youth demographic is unemployed. So you know what that means. We will not have peace. There won't be security. There will be anarchy. When people are hungry, people are hungry. And in, in, under this administration, Poverty is rising at an alarming rate. And this is a government that said it will pull out 100 million people out of poverty. So it means the exact opposite of that is what is happening in Nigeria. 100 million people right. back down into poverty. So if President Muhammadu Bari continues this way, if he hands over Nigeria in this state in mm. terms of security, if it hands over Nigeria in this level of economy, even if he likes to build the second Niger bridge in every state, mm. many Nigerians will see him as the worst leader they have ever had. All right. Mm.